So in this video, we're going to look at uh, solving quadratic equations by taking the square root of both sides. When we take the square root of both sides to solve an equation, so if we have something um, like x squared is equal to some number, and we want to get x by itself, the way we can do it is we take the square root. But when we take the square root of the non-variable side, in front of it, you must add a plus or minus sign. So this would become plus or minus the square root of a. And then we would say that x is equal to positive or negative root a. There should be two solutions when we're solving a quadratic. Very frequently, there are two solutions. We need to make sure we include both the positive version of the solution and the negative version of the solution. So we just want to be really careful when we do that. The only time that we can use this method of taking the square root is when we have one term squared and the other term doesn't contain that variable. Um, so if we had something like x squared equals 3x plus 2, we cannot use the square root method on that because we have an x over here and there's no way of getting rid of just that x term. So it only works when there's one term that's squared and then the other term, which is almost always a constant. So this won't work. All right, so let's look at some examples of taking the square root. I am going to warn you that in these examples, we might come across uh, imaginary numbers and we're going to we're going to deal with them by using i and not saying no real roots. All right, so letter A, we have x squared equals 144. To get x by itself, to undo the square, we will take the square root of both sides. But again, when you take the square root of, that const of the constant side, we include the plus or minus, the positive or negative. So this would become x is equal to positive or negative 12. That's what, how we read that, positive or negative. It could also be read plus or minus. So this has two solutions, negative 12 and positive 12. We don't want to forget the negative 12. So that's why it's so important that we're very vigilant about including that plus or minus sign or positive or negative sign. For the second one, letter B, we have negative m squared equals 256. Uh, the m squared is not completely isolated yet. It has a negative in front of it. So what we need to do is divide both sides by negative 1 just to change that so that we have positive m squared. We want to make sure that that variable is uh, isolated or that term is isolated, that the square is isolated. There we go. Okay, so now we have m squared equals negative 256. To get m by itself, we'll take the square root. When we take the square root of the numerical side, we put the positive or negative in front of it. The square and the square root cancel. We're left with m. Here we have plus or minus. It's the square root of negative 256. So that's the square root of negative 1, which is i times the square root of 256, which is 16. So it would be 16i. So we have two solutions here. They are both imaginary. We have negative 16i and positive 16i. For letter C, uh, we're going to leave this in factored form. We actually want it to be factored. So we're going to leave the y minus 3 squared as is. But we do want to move the 16. It's currently being subtracted, so we're going to add it to both sides giving me y minus 3 squared is equal to 16. Now that I have the, the square by itself, I'm going to take the square root of both sides. So I take the square root of the left-hand side. When I take the square root of the constant, I do need to put my plus or minus sign. Uh, the square and the square root will cancel. We're left with y minus 3 equals positive or negative 16. Um, the square root of 16 is 4. So we would say y minus 3 is equal to positive or negative 4. Now from here, we might want to break this up and look at our two cases. So our two cases are when there's a positive 4. That's case 1. Case 2 is when it's a negative 4. So we could rewrite this as y minus 3 equals 4 or y minus 3 equals negative 4. Then solve each one separately. Here we'll add 3 to both sides. We get y equals 7. Here we're going to add 3 to both sides. We're going to get y equals negative 1. So letter C has two solutions, negative 1 and positive 7. In letter D, we're looking at x plus 1 quantity squared equals negative 12. This is a perfect setup because we already have the square isolated on one side. So we're going to take the square root of both sides. And we're not going to forget to include that plus positive or negative. We include the positive or negative on that numerical side. Now the square and the square root cancel. And we get x plus 1 is equal to plus or minus the square root of negative 12. Uh, first of all, negative 12 is going to be an imaginary root because of the negative. Second of all, 12 is not a perfect square, so we just want to simplify it as much as we can, and that's all we can do. 
So I'm going to pull out the I, which will then make the radicand positive. And then 12 is 4 times 3, where the square root of 4 is 2. So we're going to say x plus 1 is equal to plus or minus, positive or negative, 2i radical 3. So that was just the 2 is from this being 12 being 4 times 3, where the square root of 4 is 2. The i is because it was a negative 12. I do want to solve for x, meaning I want to get x by itself. In order to get x by itself, I need to subtract 1 from both sides. Notice here that the two terms on the right-hand side, negative 1 is a nice uh, uh, integer. It's a real number. This guy over here is imaginary, and it has a radical. So for a lot of reasons, we cannot combine these two terms. We're just going to write x equals, usually we put the real part first. So I'm going to say negative 1 plus or minus 2i radical 3. You really should separate your two solutions, right? There's two solutions because we have the positive case and the, the negative case. So when we write our two solutions, which I'm going to try to mash in down here, we would have negative 1 minus 2i root 3 is one solution. Negative 1 plus 2i root 3 is the other solution.